Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about sublimation. This is a new technique we're going to encounter uh, during our purification of caffeine. Sublimation is a separation technique used to purify a solid chemical substance. It's commonly uh, done under vacuum because it's, uh, it's effective to carry this out at low pressures as we'll see. In a sublimation, a solid is heated in, in a flask under vacuum. This method of heating usually makes the solid sublime directly into a gas without first melting into a liquid. That's uh, essentially the definition of sublimation. This gas is then condensed onto a cold surface and that causes solid to reform. The impurities uh, stay behind. Your pure solid is then scraped off the cold surface for further analysis. Sublimation is one of the easiest and most efficient ways to effectively separate a solid substance from other solid impurities. As long as those impurities have a vapor pressure, remember vapor pressure and boiling point and how they're related, as long as those impurities have a vapor pressure that is sufficiently different from that of, of your desired product. If that condition's met, vacuum sublimation uh, can be used to purify any synthesized solid product. If the vapor pressures of your desired products and its impurities are too similar, you should use other techniques such as filtration, chromatography, uh, crystallization, etc. and so on. So typically if we heat a solid uh, in the open air, uh, we, with sufficient energy input, we expect the solid to melt, become a liquid, and then after more vigorous heating, the liquid will evaporate to a gas. That's the case most of the time. That's what we're used to with most materials. We don't usually expect solids to turn directly into gases, which is exactly what happens during a sublimation. Uh, however, there are exceptions. For instance, if you've ever seen dry ice, you've seen sublimation. Instead of melting to a liquid, uh, the super cold white chunks of solid carbon dioxide give off what looks like steam. It's actually the solid CO2 subliming directly into a gas. Um, yet CO2 appears to us to be unique among commonly observed substances in this ability to bypass the liquid phase. While sublimation is actually a very versatile purification technique, how do we get other solids to uh, behave in this manner? Well, let's take a look at the concept of phase diagrams. These are very convenient summaries of the physical states of substances at varying temperatures and pressures. By looking at the phase diagram of a substance, you can predict whether it will sublime uh, and under what uh, conditions. So a phase diagram plots the physical state of the substance as a function of uh, temperature and pressure. Pressure is plotted on the vertical axis, temperature on the horizontal axis. And shown on the left is a sketch of the phase diagram for carbon dioxide which again is a dry ice when it's a solid. So in that diagram you can see uh, room temperature and atmospheric pressure indicated on the axes. See those? And you can see what happens when solid CO2 is taken out of a freezer and put out onto a lab bench. Follow the blue arrow from uh, left to right along the temperature axis while pressure stays constant at one atmosphere. As CO2 heats up, uh, it bypasses the liquid phase and goes directly to the gaseous phase. Note also that if CO2 were to be heated under a higher pressure, same thing as shifting that blue arrow upward, it would behave like the substances we're more used to, that is going through a liquid phase before turning into a gas. So let's look at caffeine. Caffeine is on the right, and the caffeine phase diagram is on the right, and we can see that uh, when we attempt to heat caffeine at atmospheric pressure, the blue line uh, parallel to the temperature axis at one atmosphere pressure indicates that caffeine is first going to melt into a liquid and only then evaporate into a gas. So this is unacceptable if we want to do a sublimation. 
and this is the reason we go to reduced pressures. At lower pressure, a uh, substance such as caffeine will transition directly from a solid to a gas without passing through a liquid phase. That's exactly what we set out to accomplish in a sublimation. The green line shows what happens when caffeine is heated under reduced pressure. It goes from the solid phase directly into the gas phase without, um, without first becoming liquid. So this is the rationale for using vacuum in sublimations. You'll note that substances sub sublime at lowered temperatures as pressures are lowered. So lowering the pressure also reduces the risk that a substance will be uh, decomposed or hurt by intense uh, heating during a sublimation. So once this substance is sublimed into a gas and its vapors become isolated from the solid impurities in the original sample, these uh, clean vapors must again be converted into a solid. This is done by uh, having them condense onto a cold surface uh, in your cold finger and there you recover your pure solid and in the end a pure compound has migrated to the cold surface whereas the impurities are left behind on the hot surface and you can just scrape your a pure compound off of this cold surface. So think about some of the following questions. Is it true that in order to sublime a solid should have a relatively high vapor pressure at a temperature below its melting point? And if so, why? So think about the relationships we've talked about between vapor pressure and boiling point and try to tie that together with what we've learned about sublimation. Uh, also, why does the use of a cold finger, that's what you're going to use in your lab for the sublimation, why does a cold finger make sublimation more efficient? And why would one use a sealed capillary if you're going to take a melting point of caffeine? Think about that one as well. And have a great lab this week.